Hi oh, guys. Hi. How are you doing? Pretty good, man. This is going to be the, uh, I guess, the finals of the Redemption no. Cup. That's what I wanted to say. Right. We have two matches left, and two of those will be finals. But before the final of the Truce of a Championship, we will have the final of the Redemption Cup, which is the side event of the whole event here. Right. So 69 players were starting in the side event, and they were betting uh, for the 1k pound prize for the first place. We have two players left. Those are Elki and Greenship. Aqua, what can you tell me about those players? Well, Alki, as we know, is a poker professional, also playing for Team Liquid. And I had a chance to interview him this uh, weekend and kind of find out what his personal life is like outside of Hearthstone and how he juggles being a poker pro and a Hearthstone pro at the same time. So he's got a lot of work ahead of him. But Green Sheep is no stranger to this event. You know, he's been in this situation before at the old Insomnia, where he uh, we played for like £2,000 back then. So I think it's going to be an exciting match. Okay, well, just to put you into a perspective, how it, um, and our viewers into some perspective, basically the Redemption Cup followed the same rules as our main event. So right. it was a Swiss event into a cut. The difference was that there was six rounds of the Swiss and a top eight cut um, after those after rounds. Those, yeah. So another fun thing, fun, uh, fun fact, Elki missed his first game because he was late, so he got a default loss because of that. Still? And started with a 0-1 deficit and still win, won five games after that and advanced to the top eight from the eighth place. So he went to the cut from the last place. He was paired against the first player after the Swiss and won all of the matches in the single elimination uh, top eight to the point that we are not right not now. Bad. Which is the final between those two players, Elki and Green Sheep. So most, for just for the viewers to know, the top four was also Duck Boy and Ivan Flock. Yeah, being a Magic the Gathering pro, we've seen quite a few of those uh, playing Hearthstone. I feel like it transitions very nicely. You have to relearn some things, but for the most part, it's, it's a very bit simpler simple. afterwards. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. And now we see both players already preparing mentally <laughs> for the final between those two guys. And we see also the classes. The rules are the same. Last year was standing, uh, no ban, just play with your classes and right. try to win 3-0. So both players are bringing Druid. There's a Paladin for Elki and a Warlock, and for Green Ship we have a Shaman and a Warlock. Any ideas what kind of decks they might be playing? Well, Green Sheep loves those aggressive decks, and he's always shown that he's loved them. Face Shaman and Zulok are what I'm expecting. And Druid is kind of just a safe pick at the moment, very consistent deck, performs very well overall. Might be Aggro Druid, he might just surprise us and uh, keep consistent with kind of his picks that he's done in the past. What do you think of Elki's lineup, Noxious? I don't know, I feel like the Secret Paladin uh, is what Elki brought. We saw it, I think, in the early phases of the tournament that we were doing the Swiss round. The Paladin basically doesn't exist in the top four, uh, or did it, didn't it? did exist in the top four. We saw one in the top eight from 6-0 playing a Murloc Valley. Yep. The Secret Paladin, not exactly the best deck at the moment. Uh, we'll see how it performs. I mean, it's going to get eaten alive by Shaman, but other than that, it should be okay. Would it be? I mean, the Shaman is not that great against the Secret Paladin if he can actually ra um, like race it. Because the Noble Sacrifices can be a really huge swing. When right, maybe. Be, I just remember the days where Shaman was built uh, and played on ladder to, to eat up all the Secret Paladins. It might change a bit, we'll see. Zoo versus Zoo it is, and for now it's going to be a battle of who can trade the most efficiently. And, and uh, get, get the best the explosions. Yeah, the best explosions uh, <laughs> combined with best juggles. Yeah. We did see a big game hunter in Green Sheep's uh, Mulligan Hander. He did throw it away, so that might give him an edge when uh -huh. fighting stuff like Sea Giants and uh, Dr. Boom. Depends what variation of Zoo we'll see from these players, because you have like the Leroy Sea Giant versions, but you also have that traditional Doom Guard variation as well. I like the uh, maybe the inclusion of BGH working well in tandem with Abusive Sergeant and some of those clunky mid-game cases where you can't remove a big minion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's out. a good one. Um, the Hunter Creeper that is coined out on turn one says, gives some out some information for Elki, right? There will be most likely an Abusive Sergeant or other form of buffing the attack for the Hunter Creeper to trade with the um, with the Flame Imp or in Nav Juggler. Right? We see that there's, of course, Knife Juggler and there's some form of buff um, for, for the Hunter Creeper, but the play with the two Void Walkers kind of counters that. Right. It's a bit interesting here because on one end, you know, if you play the Direwolf Alpha, you're telling your opponent, well, I was thinking of killing your Flame Imp with my Direwolf, and that was really just it. So he yeah. thinks there's no change <laughs> to your plan, but your plan was actually to get the Creeper to pop, so that might give Elki some false information. 
Double Void Walker sets up a nice wall here, protecting Alki's Flame Imp, who's a very valuable minion at the moment. It can trade into a lot of the early stuff coming from Green Sheep. And this is such a nuisance for him now. What do right. you do? Do you play the Direwolf and reveal a potential plan you had earlier? But you don't want to just throw the Knife Juggler in and say, OK, Flame Imp, just trade into him, or an abusive, use an Abusive Sergeant. So this is all he could really do. Just chip away at one of the Void Walkers. Hmm. Okay. A bit of an awkward position, but again, I mean, it's back to uh, what we were talking about. There's a good trade being offered here with the Direwolf Alpha. I think I like that. Get the Direwolf Alpha down, get that 1-1 one, one to take out that Direwolf and the opposing wolf, mm -hmm. and then the Flamewind can push some damage. You could even pop open the Spider, I think, as the well. The boss is fine. Right? Uh, I would say you would even like to have an option of just trading with one free Voidwalker into the Dire Wolf. Right, you use the two one attack minions and then you play the M-Gang boss is what I would consider here because that way you've got a board that you can use uh, against juggles and you've still got something very resilient on the board. I like I like both lines of play, but M-Gang boss felt pretty nice. Yeah, that Voidwalker is going to do some extra work here. Soaking up a hit from the Spider first, then taking out the Direwolf Alpha. And now Elki's in a... Oh, he goes for the value, actually. Yeah. Makes I like that. That's nice. Just building that massive strong board against the zoo. And this is a very momentum-based matchup anyway. And right now, Elki's just running away with it with all these minions on board. If those juggles will miss, this will be a serious problem for for Grinchy. So now this is the question, do I want to go for the really risky play, or do I go for the in-game boss, which is not that bad. Oh wait, bad. if they miss, can you play Siege Iron? No, never. Well, you decrease the amount of by mana one. by one by yeah. just attacking, which is reminds the same because you played the Knife Juggler. Right. Then you gain one minion more on the... If you if not miss enough. with everything, you gain one mana with the Hunter's Creeper, but that's about it. Right. I like the Flame Imp here. It's a, a more sticky minion on board and might play into the Sea Giant plan much easier, you know, generating more imps. But not only that, it's a nice Argus target as well. It's a bit of a nuisance to deal with without abusives and uh, IMB cows. But we've already seen one abusive from Alki, so I quite like this. Yeah, I feel like right now one of the biggest problems that Alki may run into is if he, you know, if no life taps come up. Um, and somehow the green sheep gets a crazy board. We know that there's a sea giant. Elki probably is aware of the type of Zulok we're talking about here. So if he's playing around that, then being very cautious with the amount of minions he lets on the board is crucial for him. And an in-game boss of his own coming from Elki's side. Again, the pressure is still on here. And a lot of minions down on board, and Green Sheep's gonna have to do some catching up after his own in -game boss. I really like the way that very well done. played this. Uh, yes. this very well done, played around not only the Sea Giants, but also around the Defender of August. Mm -hmm. Any kind of buffs, uh, another maybe Dire Wolf Alpha, so really well done by Elki. I must say, I think he knew what he was getting into here. Probably. Like, it, it, it <laughs> seems like he was aware of what was gonna be coming his way. You might say that he saw the Sea Giant. Yeah. See? It was seen. <laughs> See those giants, huh? But yeah, this is an awkward spot for him now. What do you do? Do you just throw an Argus down and hope for the best? Not get much value there. And a 2 free body I think it's isn't fine. something that sticks around, right? I mean, if you kill the Direwolf Alpha and you play the Argus as a 2-3, it either kills the 2-1 on the right or it gets value in the Flame Imp. Like, there's a few things it does. The one thing that's a problem as well for Green Sheep is his health is getting low. And while Al Alki has this momentum on board, uh, he could be very much in lethal range very soon if Doom Guards pop up, or maybe another a buffer like Abusive Sergeant, or even a Leroy if he's running it. So, right. you know, he's getting dangerously low now, and Green Sheep's going to have some problems. If he gets Doom Guard right now from the top of the deck. Yeah, that's just the, the nuts. <laughs> like the nuts. The nuts. Although, that's a pretty good pickup either way. It's something you can use later on after you buff it. Not enough mana to play the Juggler and the Egg, but that won't stop him from getting the extra Imp from the Imgang boss if it trades. Uh, and you could also just, you know, get rid of uh, your abusive to not spawn more minions, to not cause a sea giant flood. I don't think that the sea giant is a problem because if right. you count the mana, even if you spawn two more minions, you kill one more minion for your opponent. No taunts. Then still, the giant is only for four mana, and that doesn't necessarily change anything. Sorry, for, for five mana because that didn't change any kind of, you know, board position. So Implosion. if you play oh, yeah. the sea giant, you're dead to board. Right. Not really respecting the sea giants here, but I don't think it's going to be much of an issue. <laughs> okay. so I was nah, like, no, I'm not bothered. <laughs> does, does Peddler do any, is there any Peddler you know, pickup that would have helped here? I mean, a Coil would have drawn a card, which could have been a Voidwalker, which could have at least stalled a tiny bit 
another Pettler. I don't know. I feel like uh, there may have been a slight chance of just stabilizing into getting a crazy Sea Giant Dragon. I think the chance was when you could have played the, uh, the Juggler into the Haunted Creeper. That was the chance. Early, yeah. yeah. that was the chance to make a comeback, to go for the risky juggles and maybe snipe two 1 HP minions. And if you have done that, then maybe the game would have been looking differently. Yeah, but right. he went for the play for, for maybe just hoping that Elke will overextend and, he, uh, and um and Grisha would like to play his Giants for almost zero mana, right? Yeah. Then toned it up. I really like the way Elki traded that turn. That turn was very... Like, this is pretty much a zoo complicated turn, right? Sometimes you'll look at zoo, it's very straightforward. You sometimes get complete blowouts. But that was a turn where you had to think about the trades a lot more than simply just going face with everything, even though you're in a commanding position. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be the Shaman from Green Sheep against the zoo. How do you feel about this matchup? <laughs> this is interesting because I thought that Zoo is a really good counter to Face Shaman in general. Yeah. Because it's so board centric that we saw that, um, what was the match? Uh, that was between Modern Leper? Modern Leper playing the Shaman. There was a, a match where he played that. There's Ignite as well who played a Shaman against the Zoo. That, that was uh, the at some trade point. for the egg and a crackle to the spider, right? That yeah. was against a Zoo. And we have seen in that particular match that Shaman cannot do the same plan for, for the game as the zoo has, yeah. which is board-centric control. I mean, you can start off a little bit board-centric, but you have to decide at one point, now it's time to go face, now it's time to throw spells out. And Totem Golem is a great uh, minion for tackling zoo, has a lot of health, it's very cheap, can trade into a lot of their earlier stuff. The only thing it really struggles with is probably Ink Gamboss at the start, and maybe Bran. But uh, Totem Golem is just such a great uh, minion to deal with some of the early pressure from Zoo. And once you've traded away, let's say, a few turns, then you can start putting on the pressure. And uh, that's where Zoo really struggles, because they need to tap sometimes to find resources. So they just end up killing themselves here. Yeah, if you can just put enough pressure, you'll be fine. I feel like this Abusive Sergeant opener, although it might look OK in many cases, is not good enough. One of the things you can do here if you're a green sheep, and that's going to sound weird, is uh, Totem up. Because if you find Stone Claw, you protect the 2-1. If you find healing, it's a setup for the, the Totem Golem. If you pick up the 1-1, uh, then you can finish off the Void Walker, and spell damage will be preset, and it will force the opponent to trade into it as soon as possible. He uses a Crackle over the rock bite there. It like still allows that. him to play the totem golem and the, the rock bite has a lot more value with that doom hammer. That just does so much damage. Usually finds more damage than uh, the crackle itself, but I like the clear of the egg here. You don't want to deal with a 4-4 at this point. This abusive sergeant is doing some work. Yeah. I really think the, the crackle was somewhat of an like, unintuitive play because most people would either develop the totem golem losing value in the process or play the rock biter and lose their turn. Uh, but you do need to keep that for later. I was quite surprised by the uh, sequencing of this turn. The tap last. The tap last. Yeah. If you would have maybe it's a new tournament technique. A second <laughs> Void Walker would have played that probably instead of the Hunted Creeper. Sure. And now that totem golem comes down with a healing totem as well. So the board does belong to Green Sheep, and Elki's gonna have to fight for it back. But if Green Sheep can get that damage in now in the next few turns, I mean. Uh, yeah. It's going to be devastating if he picks up that right, those right cards, especially a Doomhammer. Doomhammer is so important for these face shamans because it just represents so much damage over time. This is a f really funny turn. It seems like the best option would be Knife Juggler, PO, and Abusive Surgeon just to build the board and trade, guarantee, yeah, good guarantee good trade with the um, uh, with the Totem Golem and get a chance to snipe the 2-1 minion. Maybe even the 0-2 to the Totem, right? Yeah. You might like play the abusive for the fact that it has uh, you know a ping attached yeah, to it. Yeah, only the ping, exactly. Right. Really like that. Right, really like that. These guys go. Oh, one first on one face. misses, and the second one. Yeah. yeah, that's the one. That's the one you were looking for. The uh, healing totem was kind of a bonus, right? But as long as you take out that abusive sergeant, you're feeling pretty happy about it. I have to say, I'm really impressed with Elki's. Um, I agree. With, with Elki's way of playing those games so far. I still remember when he started playing Hearthstone, the first tournaments he was playing. He was off his game. Like definitely, he was now. He didn't have that knowledge of what, how to play the current, uh, the matchups that he was playing at that time. And now he is playing it really well. Yeah, navigates so well in those games. Yeah, I recall in the Seed Story Cup, he did claim that he was probably the worst player and wanted to play the easiest deck. So he brought like you know array of very easy decks to play. Mm -hmm. um, however, I feel like since then, every single time I've seen him play a game, his zoo especially. I want to say the zoo plays that he makes are very on point. 
Every single time, right? I don't think I've seen him make any funky plays that are trying to be cute. They're always very solid, and he doesn't life tap recklessly when he doesn't have to either. True. And he showed now... a lot of strong analysis when we were casting with him at Katowice mm -hmm. as well, so he definitely has the game knowledge. But like I said earlier, he is juggling a poker career and a Hearthstone career as well, so splitting your time between two games uh, can mean that you don't have enough time to invest in decks like, like control decks and combo decks. So sticking to stuff like Zoo, Midrange, Druid, Secret Paladin is probably a good bet for Elki, and yeah. he's playing to his strengths. Well, Hello to there. Tremic. Did not expect this lovely thing to come up. Yep. That's a new thing to me, too. I mean, I love the card. It's, it's really right. powerful. But I think I'm def if, I, if I'm playing the... Oh, <laughs> wow. I just wanted That's to say... That's the guy you want to see. If I'm playing the face Shaman, I'm usually sticking to one kind of strategy for the deck, which is most likely burn. Yeah, like well... Burn. And that, this is like uh, a hybrid. <laughs> but when you have the guarantee of getting a free for minion for zero mana, I don't hate that. I would play that. Doesn't even overload you, why not? No drawback. I just feel like in many cases the uh what the Descartes Totemic does, it forces the opponent to wonder if you if you're playing Flame Tongue Totem um, in your deck just because you have it. And then because you're face shaman, they end up having to trade into it. Sometimes you pick up a manatide that's pretty clutch, stone claw to just give yourself a little bit more uh, resilience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think this is pretty frightening for Green Sheep. If you look at Alki's hand, he could drop another giant, he could drop the Void Walker first, drop a giant, even tap if he wanted. And then the next turn, he Argus is up to eight eights. Now, how does a face shaman get through that without a silence? And we've already seen an earth shock on an egg. So. How does the face shaman get through that? There's no way of getting through that unless you play elemental destruction. This is a very uncommon, yeah, I mean, uh, in a list which contains the Tuscar Totemix, I'd be surprised to see elemental destruction, but I'd like to see it. <laughs> oh, the eight damage to the face, which is, which is basically game next turn. As soon as that giant came down, I saw a raise of the eyebrow from Green Sheep like, oh, really? <laughs> I have to deal with these two now? I just don't think it's going to happen. I think the Argus will seal the game here, and Green Sheep might just consider conceding. like, I don't have to deal with this, the stress of dealing with these 9-9s nine on board. I mean, we're talking about... I mean, he can clear up two minions here if he wants, right? Uh, well, he can kill one of the giants, but that's not the way... You, you might be to. able to win on the back of this, though, just because your burn is bigger than... Uh, like the, the, the Warlocks can muster, and if he's starting to trade with the Giants in fear of you holding the perfect cards, uh, there's a slight chance you're able to pull it together, because this Trog is getting really huge. Oh, Five wow. Five damage. Wow, the perfect amount of damage needed. Look at that. That's a lot of damage coming from the Trog. Well, there's a be five to base now. The Owl can uh, silence it, take it down to a 1-3, and then he can Argus to... 12, 13, 15 damage. Not enough. And a lot of damage from Elki as well in the future. He has a low feb to lock up any potential spells. If he's feeling threatened at all, it just drops low feb and says, what are you going to do about it? And then you've got that power overwhelming for later to finish off the game. Elki's in such a solid position here, and Green Sheep's going to need to find something like a Doom Hammer to start chipping away at this health. Yeah, it doesn't even have the mana to play it because the overload, which makes the Shaman position here pretty much a, uh, a losing one, right? And almost... Green Sheep's reaction here, like, ooh. <laughs> I can't that hurt. <laughs> yeah, that hurt a lot. <laughs> yeah, the eyes said everything. And I was thinking about the low tap instead of the defender of Argus. Right, uh, I liked that a bit because better. of what we said, Aqua. That's really, it was really would be like locking down the Shaman from playing anything because of the four overload. As not a single spell could have been played, right? So and it would protect the giant from spells specifically, and that's how Green Sheep dealt with the last he is one. Getting a trade him. here with a spell damage totem and the rock biter, and the abusive. And that keeps him alive for another turn, at the very least. So five damage on board. Doomguard would finish this. This almost does, but not Ooh, quite. An implosion. You can't play both, and you can't tap anymore, I think, even though your opponent has zero cards. But he, wait, he played two Ancestral Knowledge. Right. So there's only one draw left yeah. each turn. Hmm. So maybe like it's even worse. the implosion worth. here over the low feb. I would like to keep the low feb for a moment where you feel like you're threatened like by a spell to finish you off, like a crackle or two. If he has two cards in hand, lock out those two cards. There's zero cards in Green Sheep's hand now. But you do lock the game, though, with low tap. I think you just go for the low tap, deal five damage to the face, right. and that's it. See what happens. Yeah. It's, it's hard not to get the extra five next turn. Yeah, well, you have the low tap. Yeah. <laughs> so that's exactly five that you need, right? It'd be pretty tough not to win this, uh, unless Green Sheep plays a funky lightning storm for full mana cost, but I doubt it. And that's about it. The escape concede will be the next play. Done and done. 2-0 lead for Elki so far. Very convincing with the Zulog. 
What does Green Sheep have left? Just a Druid? The Druid. Yeah. And bad it's a 50-50 matchup, basically. Well, traditionally, it's always been a bad matchup, but Druid's in such a spot right now where it has this great consistency. Uh, do you feel like the Sea Giant versions have any impact on the matchup? I want to say that in many cases, you're forcing kind of like Handlock, the uh, the Druid, to have the card. One of the things that Druid does, though, is clean up the one ones exceptionally well on the turn where you're supposed to play Sea Giant. It's about, you know, turn four or five, you've been able to flood a little bit, you play the Sea Giant, it's too late, they swipe it. So you have to have a really sick setup with an implosion or Hound's Creeper popping. So I'd still say that Druid right now just flips a coin against Standard Zoo. Yeah, good. Well said. I have nothing to add. All right. Let's see how it starts next. Oh, a brand bronze build in that. Mind so control well. tech. Looks like he is teching a little bit to fight the zoo lot. This may just tilt things in the green sheep's favor a little bit more, having those mind control techs instead of shades of Nax. And that was quite popular for a little while. I remember casting the Onog uh, at PAX, and a lot of the Druid players, including Admirable and TJ, were running these mind control tech versions. The combat or the aggression that was going on, secret piled in zoo locks. So this might play in his favor. Right, even Ness, I think, was playing MC Tech in his uh, in his list for Druid. So Life Coach playing around it, didn't really get punished too much by it. But it is a card that has the potential to single-handedly turn a game around that looks lost. There was a, a competitive game of recent memory where the brand Bronzebeard was stolen with MC Tech and the heal bot was played for 16 <laughs> health gain, which was absolutely insane. All right, Haunted Creep are going to challenge these little groups. Uh, the more Groots he summons, more the more... Uh, <laughs> okay, this just got serious. <laughs> that, that's how you win, uh, if you want to win. Yeah, some little guys. But these little guys do play into the Sea Giant strategy. No, uh, no, None of them in Alki's hand at the moment. Bran going to come down as a body here. Maybe get double Defender of Argus, maybe double Peddler in the future. But this Bran is a threat. He's going to have to deal with it. Yeah, the this Bran has to be uh, dealt with instantly. Right. Argus turn? Nope, not letting that happen. Double Gormach from Bran is just beautiful. It just feels so good if you're able to pull that off. Greenship might be tempted to use the Keeper to silence the Hunted Creeper. Right. And I think he's actually doing that. He's going to have to coin out that Living Roots with true damage. That's exactly the plan if he does this. Okay. Yes. I like this a lot, actually, because he gets a, a minion on board. The Wrath just could have went for the Wrath and the Tray, but this this he wants to develop as many minions as possible. We've already seen Alki swarm Greenship in two games. So you just want that to happen again. Implosion could still do a ton of work here for uh, for Elki, assuming no swipe and a successful three or four on the implosion. So that's that's the biggest, I think, moment for Elki's game yeah. right now to decide which way you want to go. Do you go for the defender of Argus to kill the one one with your hunted creeper and beyond mercy, right, of the swipe, or? Play swipe into sorry, play implosion into swipe as well. But if you're all high, and then have a you, you have a chance of playing the Gormok next, and there's no swipe, that's really rewarding. Or you just play this these you know kind of passive two double one drops. And oh he picks God. up pretty much the nuts. And no uh, swipe to punish as well. So LP is rewarded for kind of a high risk, high reward play. Yep. And there we go. This means the Gormok will get to kill the Azure Drake. And I don't or think I've ever seen as a Gormok. This is insane. This is like the this is the dream. The dream. Green ship will be crushed. And uh, down goes the Drake. When it's not the Boom Bot, it's the Gormok, right? There's always something out there for this poor Drake. As the Drake just get taken out <laughs> all the time. <laughs> they're just hated by all the They're just balanced. It's just because they're killable. <laughs> Oh, wow, wait, that's uh, Emperor Thorson. Force to trade either way, and then you have a combo that's reduced, but you do need a second copy of it. The problem is, if he just drops Thorson, he does get the reduction, but he doesn't really get anything that sticks to the board. Direwolf Alpha, Argus in Elki's hand, lots of 1-1s one -ones as well, and little guys that take out that Emperor. So I know the play, then. You Wrath for Cycle and the Creeper, and you just stop like a swipe. <laughs> oh, that's a good, great. That's a good play. I think that's the only way you can win the game. If you plan to win the game, that's yeah, the that, play. That's probably like one of the, if not the only one. Although you could still wait one turn, technically. To I play the exact same play, so. but if, if buffs come out, you're pretty dead. I'd like to play the wrath for one and hope just for the swipe from the top of the deck. That would turn the game around. Yeah, you can still get the decent slowdown. Like we saw here, right? Gomar goes down, the abusive goes down. You're taking four damage a turn. You might pick up 
something like an Ancient of Lords or the Claw, you can stall a little bit longer. And uh, off of the combo you've got, possibly with Savage War, if you fill up the board just a little bit more, you can still win. And we'll see the next card from the deck, if that's a swipe. If it is. It's brutal. Yeah. It's and Argus is a card that could definitely make the swipe less effective now. Nice. Yep, yeah. and those two twos are going to be able to avoid any potential swipes. And this board is just so dominant and so aggressive. And Green Sheep is going to have to find something. And yeah, that's a swap! Oh my yeah. god! You saw that. You, you know, called it, Lohan. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my curse. The I, curse. I, I mean, he can still get a good swipe with the Innervate Hero Power, right? Um, it's not completely impossible for him to salvage this, but it's going to take... Uh, Goodness, I feel bad for Green Sheep right now. Punished for not taking the risks. Well, granted, there was still a chance that he could come back naturally through something like a good 5-drop and, you know, an Innervate play without having to rely on the complete gimmick that Swipe was. But, yes, it would have been uh, My God. something of a winning play. Oh, this just feels bad. And Alki's just going to replenish the board, much like Zoo does. And Green Shield will probably be stuck in the same situation he was in before. Have to deal with an onslaught of minions coming from the Warlock player. And I don't know if Green Shield has the stuff to come back here. Alki, if Alki gets a good draw now, like a Doom Guard, he can just drop Dial with the Doom Guard. There's, you don't need it. it you don't need it. You need nothing. You need a one drop from the Peddler with everything yeah. you've already got, and that's it. You have two good two drops, and this is more than enough to divide the attention from the Droid. Let's see if uh, Swipe Soul can fire. make its way into the hand again. Second Swipe would help. Voidwalker is better against that Swipe. Could have taken the Soul Fire for a bit of extra burst, but like you guys say, it doesn't really need it at this point. Just absolutely br brutal for the Druid player. Right, so Swipe here. Not as effective because the Voidwalker came in, so you would be able to clean up everything barring a single minion. And a correct placement of the Voidwalker as well. Right. Right next to the Direwolf Alpha. So, this is no help. This and is it. Elki takes it 3 to 0 on his, on the back of his zoo. Very well played, I have to say. Elki yep. played it really well. The only turn one could have done differently was the, against the Shaman with the Lotep instead of the Defender Vargas. Both plays were fine. Apart from that, he played. So I would say that was the flawless, like, flawless zoo play from him. And the, um, the, the the play that we're mentioning, right, the low theft defender, it's not even, you can't even make an absolute case uh, yeah. one way or the other. You can justify either one. I think Elki just fantastic play. From Fantastically play. One yeah. of the best matches that we have seen during the, those three days. Yeah. So congratulations to Elki. 3-0 against Green Ships takes the title um, of the Redemption Cup. Yeah.